As I pack things up, um, there's a lot of DVDs and old stuff that I have to get rid of. Interestingly, um, over the years I've had several brands, so this is HP. This is, I don't know actually, I'll have to look closely the line in. This one is TDK, this one is HP, and this one is the Mercs. So I've had used several brands and most of these are about 10 to some of them even 15 years old. Check back some of these things, all these are old movies, useless stripping and stuff I have to throw away. I have some software, you know, real old software, 98, you know, Windows ME, Lord knows why I have that, but yeah, anyway. So just gonna look at them, um, try to see how the brands compare split them and look at something that happened 10 years ago how does the technology survive what i found interesting about the uh hp which is probably not visible here um i'm not sure if it's visible on the camera but there are little lines right going along parallel here right and i'll show that more um i have some more hp ones this one is okay this one isn't doing too bad but i have other ones same color which is a different i guess uh batch and same lines appearing it does not appear to have anything lines wise on this brand it does not appear to have anything on the memorex um or the tk i'm sure i have samsung somewhere let me go and see if i can find me a samsung to compare also so we have five brands but as it stands right now just going across to my um order again hp there are lines in here, clear, visible lines. Now, they all seem to be working, but I haven't already checked if the files properly. Lines again here, you can see them there, HP. Lines on this one, clearly visible, HP. No lines on this one. TDK, not HP, HP is terrible. Um, it doesn't seem to hold. Uh, now, as I said, this may be 10 years plus, but still, I mean, the rest of the brands hold. All of these seem to come up okay. They have a few spots that have bad errors, but then DVDs always have errors. Uh, um, I'm just gonna look through and see what was the differences. I'm sure they made in different places, but um, they all seem similar. It is a purple coating. This is a double layer thing. So there's basically one layer on top that's purple and another layer that has the aluminum foil in between those two layers and yeah um that's how it burns i haven't gone and check um in detail back again on the technology i mean the basic understanding that it is changing the phase of um some chemical in there and that's why it causes a different reflection depending on the heat and of the laser and all that sort of stuff but i haven't gone back and looked at that properly um probably will probably won't what i want to do more so is just document this of, of all of them this is the only one that i cannot erase the um writing on all the rest of them it erases fairly easily with acetone and there's no visible um damage uh strangely i thought acetone would have i would throw some acetone on the front face of uh, these and see how they react see if they got cloudy i expect that they will um try to figure out what brand this is and yeah that's it no editing i'm just gonna stick together these clips and it's not gonna probably flow that well but mm, time time is very limited again sure i only found one more of uh, verbatim and again this one doesn't seem to be um, any major problems this is physical damage scripts this is not failure of the device this one was physically damaged the rest of them aren't um i can't find any samsung's it seems that what i did is i only bought samsung cds not dvds strange um and those cds have large mp trees while it's easy enough to get everything off youtube these days i uh, just don't feel like trying my dvds my cds sorry my mp trees started the acetone test by splitting acetone on these uh not more than probably 30 seconds ago and as you could see every single one of them is getting white and this is like 30 seconds it's extremely breezy right now this acetone will vaporize in two twos i mean you're probably not gonna get more than a minute minute and something on this 
actually today as soon as kind of fairly vaporized already but um it does a very good job of destroying ah look at this you can see it's vaporizing you can just see the movement it does a really 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 good job of destroying cds and dvds well, dvds um i mean i expected it to destroy it but this is fast this is probably one of the easiest ways if you want to destroy something well it's not fully destroyed i mean i'm sure somebody with some uh nice machine and some polish could probably make this thing all work again um but yeah just for the lemon this is probably destroyed i've not spent the time before to try destroying um uh, dvds um i didn't realize how easy it is two layers that i mentioned before yeah you just put a knife in between clamp it on the vice like this put a knife here you can feel the space in hit the two taps and it separates i need to tap it i can't do this with one hand but yeah it separates and it peels off sometimes it looks like the um the uh reflective layer comes on this other times it doesn't and if you look you could see through this this is the um flexible purplish coating color and i need to research why it is but i'm still seeing colors on this one i don't think you'll see it on everyone i'm not sure but look how flexible this is now i was under the distinct impression that cds broke easily because well all my friends CDs broke easily dvds um you know ball hand and they broke right i've seen cracked dvds this thing is extremely flexible i mean this is really 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 flexible you really can't be that uh, i'm not sure how good it is for making optical projects it might be because um again this has to be optically you know brilliant um i'm not sure if it will affect anything but i doubt i seriously doubt in fact let's have a look are we seeing any, the, the video very differently and the answer is probably not we're gonna get some variation with the colors on this but um yeah this is not um it's not bad at all so maybe it makes sense taking these off i don't know what you could do with them um and this next side um yeah there's a layer of i am not too sure how safe this material is to handle a lot of um but as you can see under pressure it varies one wonders if this thing has any potential um like a uh, for use as a liquid crystal or if it under pressure it changes because look at this look at this brilliant pattern that you see here and that seems to suggest under pressure it changes does it change permanently or not can this be used can we stick this can we take this off split it in two get a nice piece like this uh stick this on something and use this as a strain gauge per se something that shows that if we stick this on basically if it's something had bent too much deflected too much it's going to leave a permanent record be useful in projects right, this is the back end of one of them and again look at how flexible this is i mean this is way way more flexible than i had assumed this thing would be so they're both actually quite flexible surprisingly tvds crack and while we are delving in the realm of stupid things let's use that term would you believe a dvd and i guess a cd fits almost perfectly on an anger grinder <laughs> i didn't realize that uh, i just look at it and said man yeah, it looks about the size let's see what could happen yes, it's really close um it does have a little bit of play when it gets in but nothing much more than what already exists for that so the question at hand is can i stick a piece of emery on this and make a grind in this and basically use more than one to create some rigidity in the back of it so it doesn't shatter on me easily so maybe three for the rigidity and just the top one stick now these with the rough coating um they keep the paint very good and obviously they should keep glue very good so i'm going to try this stupid thing with eye protection obviously because this is really not in the realm of safe so yeah why not eye protection i've sent down all my stuff with full face protection that's really what i should be using full face protection not just eye protection don't have any right now i've shipped that out already so 
yeah just a light touch just to see if it works I'm not gonna stress it too much probably because if it does shatter it, it could be a little dangerous right so this is the paper I'm gonna use 3m wet dry 320 and one of them I'm probably gonna put this one on the um, shiny surface with the 3m adhesive this is a plastic uh, emblem adhesive for sticking on the emblems on cars um, so I'm gonna try that and this is a aluminum oxide waterproof paper it doesn't have a brand on it I'm gonna put that on the rough um, white side here I'm using Dunlop contact cement I'm gonna let those both dry in the meantime I'm gonna try to polish one of these back with um, some fine polish and see if I can get back a shine um, it's a bit comfortable curious well the deed is done um, this is stuck a little bit off I cut the arm this before and then got the hole after and yeah when you stick in it doesn't actually fit but it does make it easier than putting glue all over the outside of the paper you're gonna use so this is this one this is the um, 3m glue for sticking adhesives a little bit of glue got there and it's on the actual um, smooth side and this is the um, contact cement on the rough side and this is the CD the DVD with the rough side now it isn't already comparable this was the higher grit so obviously this is gonna have more friction but again it, it is on the rough side so hopefully this works hopefully this works and I'll just back it up with one or two although I think maybe I can get away with just spin it but let me just put one or two just to add some strength some rigidity to make sure this thing doesn't shatter because DVDs crack if you these shatter well those um discs dry I don't want to just run them as soon as I put it up I'm gonna try to polish this one actually let me take this one uh, this one's a little bit easier it says less and um, yes yes it all went on the side and completely took off the paint well completely bunched it up um, so I'm gonna try this I'm gonna use this Preston uh, car wax and cleaner if you can't already tell, this person is probably older than me. And this baby wipe. Amazing little things. This synthetic cloth wasn't available when I was young. It is amazingly useful. Um, this one is largely dry. Who cares what salt and they put in it? The fact is, these synthetic base cloths, cheap, useful. Very, very useful. You got all those fibers and cotton at times, and just disposable and easy. Well, the quick answer is no. Significant physical damage to the point where I can feel those grooves. Um, it seems like fingerprints. I don't remember actually touching this when I was um, pouring um, the acetone, but I guess the fingerprints are on it left enough oils that led to certain areas getting a greater attack than others. And it actually erases the fingerprints that was on a DVD. Interesting use of acetone while they destroy a DVD, maybe you get to find out who actually touched that DVD. Um, I think I will test that experiment a little bit, uh, just by putting a fingerprint on a clean one, wiping one down clean, pouring some acetone and seeing if it raises the fingerprint just in one spot and see nowhere else comes up. Um, but yeah, that doesn't work. I could put this in and spin it up on the grinder, but that's probably not a good idea because you'll end up with grooves this way, which sort of defeats the purpose. You really want to wipe out this way, you want to grate out this way. Um, so yeah, I have 2000 grit sandpaper, but again, that defeats the purpose. The size of the laser beam, we are going to mess this up if we do that. Um, this is not recoverable. So acetone kills it pretty good. On to the flame test. Um, right, I'm gonna just use my um, torch. Run some heat on this. This side is clear. This is the one with a rough finish, so maybe it has a little more protection. This is the one with, um, well, this is just the other side of it. It's a HP, MRX, uh, and the Noreen brand. So let me see if I can do this while I have filament. It's going to be interesting, as I said, not much editing, if any. So let's see. 
Grab those cherry pass. And it bubbles interesting. Interesting, to say the least. <laughs> Alright, let's try that one. Again, it feels not really fast, but it's not as um, pronounced. It's not slower. Definitely the easiest side to work with. This one going really fast. This one now having a, a bit of a coating. Let's see. Oh, really fast again. This one smells bad. Go to the other Potential for using this plastic. It took a while, it got some bubbles, but if we take this out and we put it together, we run some hydrochloric acid, alright, muriatic acid on it to clean out all the aluminum foil that they've had, we probably get some optically high quality plastic that could possibly be used. Lama Choto doesn't do very well with heat. Sure, it's a pretty good method of destroying a DVD too. I'm gonna look at the other sides. This one bubbled up quite a lot, so a bit much heat here. It was able to retain it and it bubbled quite extensively. So different behavior, very rough finish here now. This one, um, it melted on the other side. We heated this side, it melted on this side and it's relatively smooth, glassy, pretty much what you'd expect from plastic. This one melted relatively smooth. Again, not as bubbly as this one. That one took a bit more heat with that uh, material and distributed it a little bit better. But look at this. Very, very, very different behavior of this and this. Now granted, this is still hot. Um, it was still more, um, damp from the acetone, but very significantly. Watch this. Doesn't scrape. Watch this. Scrapes. Very different behavior. This thing chemically altered to a point where it was not really recoverable. It just proves it isn't recoverable. This DVD has been cleaned, washed, and basically clean, wiped on my chassis. So yeah, there's some internet. Press a little finger, pinky finger, partial print on this, so I don't expose too much on the internet. And I'm going to throw some acetone on this from the using of the press stone and just some oils on my hand. So what I'm going to do is put some acetone on it and see if it raises up and if it's discernible. Just so that we can make things even more dangerous, I bought this really cheap machine uh, a few years ago because I wanted a 90 degree for a project to build something and it, you know, this was the easiest way to get it. I didn't know anyone with a dead one. Um, this came with flat pieces. This is the piece that fits below on this one. And as you can see, it's a lip. That lip exceeds the CD, right? So if we were to take a CD and put it, it doesn't fit, right? I don't want to just clamp on that little, little, little piece of plastic. So this one machine came with a flat bottom piece. So what I've done, now that said, the reason I can't use this machine, and it's a lighter machine by far, this, this tolls. So it's safer, is look at this. It is not the same size as this one. This is the standard size. I don't know why the Chinese cut the size of the shaft to save a little bit of metal. Anyway, so this doesn't work, so I can't use this one. All right, what I've done is taken the bottom piece of this, put it here, and take the top piece of this one, which is the important piece for tightening down. And hopefully I don't kill myself, because now what I've done is added an extra layer of problems to this thing. It was already a very risky dodgy proposition with something that could shatter and a makeup procedure on something that's this you know powerful that said what i'm going to do i do have um, a variable speed um uh code i made up i'll show that just now i'm going to use that and i'm going to start this thing slow so at least the energy which is based upon the velocity of rotation um, angular velocity will be less. All I have is uh, proper goggles, no face shield. So yes, we'll just try to polish here a little bit. That's just obviously pretty much damage going through stable. See if I can get off this little paint spot and a couple things. See if it works.
without trying to cause too much trouble. If that works, actually, I think I'm going to polish this a little bit and try a piece of metal. Quick sidebar, my variable speed uh, controller. This is essentially a incandescent bulb dimmer and supply comes in through this first and this side here after. This device came with not one where you actually um, turn from the beginning and put on. So you could leave this at your preset speeds. The problem with that is that this is on and this is off. And it's kind of hard to tell which is on or off. So I've decided to put a neon in there. It's a neon I had since about 92, 93. And I've just wired the neon in. So when it comes on, you plug in, you will see light here if the circuit is on. And if I take it off, it will come off. So let me just put it on and let's have a look at that and see how that works. Um, that should be on there. Right, neon came on. Clearly see it's on, off, on, off. So that allows me to know whether this is on or off. Other than that, it's impossible how they did this to tell if it's on or off, on, off. It's the middle of the day, so there's no one here to film for me while I do this. So I am definitely not gonna try holding this grinder with that disc with one hand that is just going beyond stupid now it actually works pretty well i mean look at it it's come on i've done this one on the steel and you could clearly see where this is actually it's coming off it's not giving me any bad things it, it hasn't shown major major wear this is the final disc i believe so let me get the heavier one and try that and see how it goes and then I'll try this one just to see how well it deflects. This one I'm not trying to take. Right? I just want to see how well it deflects. So now, much rougher this than this one. This was the final disc. Nothing damaged here. It didn't break, didn't shatter, didn't crack. Again, though DVDs act weird. Sometimes they crack, sometimes they don't. So let me try this one. I expect reasonably good results. And I expect it to take off the material from this a lot faster. I'm a little less comfortable with this one. Maybe it is that it's a rougher um, grit. Um, you know, it's not as fine. Um, it's a bit more wobbly than that one. I don't know if it just wasn't tightened properly. I mean, this doesn't really, you know, it fits on okay, but, um, you know, pretty tight actually. But um, I don't know. This one just feels a little odd on me. I don't know if it's the glue that was basically a little bit more bulky and the fine uh, plastic glue. But I don't like this one, it's not as comfortable. But that said, it worked okay. And I took off the material here. But if you notice, I'm much more comfortable with this one. That was a finer grip. Look how nice and smooth this came out. And uh, this one, uh, not so much. I wasn't comfortable. So I'm not exactly fully pleased with this one. Um, maybe what I need to do is put a back end plate. But then, you see if I put a back end arm, this right, I lose this flex. And this flex is what I'm counting on the sand because it bends a little bit it deflects a little to give you you know that sand and of course it gives that brown circular pattern but you know it deflects a little if it becomes extremely rigid then it becomes one of these discs uh it might be worth trying let me just put it here. actually i'm not that comfortable with this one you know i've gotten away this far that's called a good day let's move on to trying my little tin disc right so i've put this on uh, I need to tighten it up properly. I don't think it's tightened properly yet. Um, but yeah, it's just to try this and see what will happen. How the edge, I'm seeing a nick here already. That's probably not the best. See if it will deflect. Hopefully it wouldn't shatter. Uh, and if it does, hopefully my hand is fine enough away that it doesn't slice it because this is as much as it's plastic. That'll cut. I could use that and cut a piece of wood. In fact, I'll just. Nah, no, let me do not shut. But you could not show it with this. It's plastic, but yes, it'll cut. As I expected, this thing was able to grind. It was able to polish already. Well, not grind per se, but polish. I mean, I'm getting a reasonable knockoff of rust on this. And rust is relatively abrasive. Surprisingly, this isn't significantly damaged. It's, as you can see, very, very flexible. It didn't shatter on me. It didn't do me anything bad. Um, Yes, it could have, um, but it could be quite useful. I mean, getting in here, this is a lip, right? Getting in here and doing that is, it's, you know, the other piece, these, this would not have done that. This is stiff, a lot, lot stiffer. This piece of it has no flex. This has significant flex, right? Um, it's 
seems to be rather useful. Um, again, I would not suggest it. I would say buy the correct thing for this device. Do not do what I do. Experimentation is for information and learning about it. Not necessarily doing this every day. It will bite you sooner or later. Um, this, this, this is the one we had done before with the fingerprint on it. Um, seen it a little. Uh, it's not showing up that well, but I'm gonna try some press stone and we'll see how that turns out. I've polished a bit. Um, no luck. It's visible. If I turn it on angle, I can see it. But it doesn't show up anywhere close to as bad as the other one. It didn't raise as much. Uh, maybe it's just a lack of the draw if I had enough oil, particularly on that one, less oil on this, so maybe it's not a good technique. Doesn't seem to be reliable. Now that I've taken all this finer one, you can clearly see it was failing. It was cutting, it was cracking, it had gotten brittle, and yes, this one was failing. These two, they don't appear to be failing. Um, so that extra backing does help a lot. Um, yeah. This two appear to be fairly fine. So it really comes down to tin one. While it was able to do some stuff, no, not really the best idea. It will feel.